Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. If this is your first time, let me give you a quick rundown on what we're all about. Here on the Commander's Quarters, we build fun and inexpensive Focus Commander decks. A Focus Commander deck is more tuned than a casual deck, but not quite to the level of a competitive or optimized deck. Decks on the Commander's Quarters are built within a $25 budget that's $25 for 100 cards. Prices are powered by this channel's sponsor, TCG Player. But before we get started today, make sure you go hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on the latest Commander's Quarters videos. Today's commander is Gishath Sun's Avatar. Gishath is a 7-6 dinosaur avatar that costs 5 red, green, white. It has trample, vigilance, and haste, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards from the top of your library, put any number of dinosaur creature cards from among them onto the battlefield, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Gishath is the perfect fit for an aggressive dinosaur tribal deck. Just by itself, Gishath is a huge threat being a 7-6 with trample, vigilance, and haste. And when it hits, we can spiral this game out of control very quickly by overwhelming the board with dinosaurs. So our strategy for this deck is really straightforward. We want to get Gishath out really quickly and then swing away at our opponents. Gishath does cost 8, but luckily green is one of our colors, so we can ramp very quickly with this deck. And we've got ways to make our commander deal even more damage to our opponents, getting us more dinosaurs off the top of our library. So how do we win with this deck? Well, we want to overwhelm our opponents with our giant dinosaur army. We are running a ton of dinosaurs in this deck, so odds are when we hit with Gishath, we're going to get a couple off the top of the library for free. And we're not talking about getting just a few small dinosaurs off the top, we're talking about big dinosaurs that are giant threats just by themselves. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to take you through 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how you're going to win with it. So let's start with tactic number one, Land of the Lost. We're going to be running a ton of ramp in this deck to get Gishath out as quickly as we can. So we're going to be running things like Rampant Growth, Thunderherd Migration, and Farseek, each of which will let us search our library for basic land and put into play tapped. Farseek does have the limitation though that we can't search for a forest. Then we've got Ranging Raptors, which is not only a dinosaur, but it also helps us ramp. It has Enrage. Whenever it's dealt damage, we had to search our library for a basic land and put into play tapped. Then we've got Fertilid, which enters the battlefield with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and we can pay 1 into green to remove 1 in order to search our library for a basic land and put into play tapped. Next up is Cultivate, which will let us search our library for 2 basic lands, 1 goes onto the battlefield tapped, and the other goes into our hand. And then there's Grow from the Ashes, which is a very flexible ramp spell. We can either cast it just to search our library for a basic land and put into play untapped, but if we kick it for an extra 2, we get to search our library for 2 basic lands and put them into play untapped. Next up is Overgrowth, which is an aura that can enchant a land. And whenever that enchanted land is tapped for mana, we get to add an additional green green to our mana pool. Then there's Sky Shroud Claim, which will let us search our library for 2 forest cards and put them onto the battlefield untapped. Explosive Vegetation is also going to get us 2 lands, but they can be any basic land, but they're going to come onto the battlefield tapped. And Circuitous Root is pretty much the exact same thing as Explosive Vegetation, but we can also search for gate cards too. This can come in really handy when it comes to mana fixing for the deck. Finally, there's Broken Bond, which serves a double purpose in this deck. Not only will it ramp us by letting us play an additional land, but it's also going to destroy an artifact or enchantment. So I know that we just went through a lot of ramp cards, but we're still not done yet. Again, Gishath costs us 8, and we need to get it out as quickly as possible to get our engine going. So let's look through some more ramp pieces in tactic number 2, Dinosaur Tamers. First up we've got Drover of the Mighty, which we can tap to add 1 mana of any color to our mana pool. On top of that, it's going to get plus 2 plus 2 as long as we control a dinosaur, and we are running plenty of dinosaurs in this deck. Then there's Atsakin Seer, which can also tap for 1 mana of any color, and we can also sacrifice it to return a dinosaur card from our graveyard to our hand. So early on in the game, this card can be great for us when it comes to ramping and fixing our mana, but later in the game it can help us get back one of our threats if we need to. Next up, we're running a couple of creatures that help reduce the cost of our dinosaurs. Kinjali's Collar and Otapak Huntmaster are both going to reduce that cost by 1. On top of that, we can tap Otapak Huntmaster to give a dinosaur haste until the end of the turn. And then there's Knight of the Stampede, which does it even better by reducing the cost of dinosaur spells by 2. This makes a huge difference in casting a lot of spells in this deck, including our commander. With this deck, we're trying to get our commander out on turn 4, 5, or 6 at the very latest. So by running all of these pieces of ramp, we're going to make our deck more consistent. But once we get Gishath out onto the battlefield, we want to hit our opponents as hard as we can. Let's go through some ways to do that in tactic number 3, Double Dino. Silverblade Paladin might not be a dinosaur, but it comes in huge in this deck. It has Soul Bond, and as long as it's paired with another creature, both creatures have Double Strike. So as soon as Gishath hits the battlefield, we can pair it with Silverblade Paladin to make it hit for 14. Again, the more damage that our commander does to our opponents, the more dinosaurs we get off the top of our deck for free. And then there's Blood Mist, which is an enchantment that lets us give one of our creatures Double Strike at the beginning of our combat. Again, Gishath costs us quite a bit of mana to cast it, so we're not going to have a lot of mana left over to equip it with something before attacking. By having these free effects on the battlefield, we can give it Double Strike right away. But the card that does this best is actually the Golden Pig of the deck, which is the number one card out of our 99. That card is Berserker's Onslaught, which is an enchantment that costs 3 red red. It says attacking creatures you control have Double Strike. So not only will this card let us hit for more damage with Gishath, but also with our other creatures too. Since we're running a dinosaur deck with a ton of huge threats, giving them double strike makes them massive. With just a few swings with this on the board, it can get out of hand very quickly. 
Not only does this card help enable our commander at doing what it wants to do, but it also helps us finish off our opponents. And that's why it earned the title of the Golden Pig of the deck. Another great card in this deck is Goring Ceratops. Not only does it have double strike on its own, but whenever it attacks, other creatures we control are going to gain double strike until the end of the turn. So this is pretty much like a Berserker's Onslaught on a body. The best part about this card is that it's a dinosaur, so we can get off the top of the library for free with Gish-ass Trigger. But the downside is, is that it's a creature, so it's a lot easier to remove, especially since it has to attack in order for us to get this trigger. It's still a great card though, and it helps us with our game plan, and it helps us win the game too. Alright, so we've talked about setting ourselves up combat-wise, but what about setting ourselves up in other ways? Let's go through some of those ways in tactic number four, Dynamite Draw. First up, there's Colossal Majesty, which is going to let us draw a card at the beginning of our upkeep if we control a creature with power 4 or greater. With this deck, there are a ton of creatures that have a power of 4 or greater, so we're going to draw a lot with this card. Then there's Elemental Bond and Garrick's Pack Leader, both of which pretty much do the exact same thing. Whenever a creature with power 3 or greater enters the battlefield under our control, we get to draw a card. Soul the Harvest is very similar, but it doesn't have that restriction of power 3 or greater. Each of these cards is fantastic with this deck, because again, we're going to get Dinosaurs into play for free with Gishas Trigger, so we get to draw a lot of cards when they come into play. Next up there's Harmonize, which is a great draw spell in its own right. It only costs 4 mana, and we're going to get to draw 3 cards. And finally we're running Runic Armasaur, which is actually a dinosaur that can help us draw. It has whenever an opponent activates an ability of a creature or land that isn't a mana ability, you may draw a card. With the number of opponents that you have in Commander, this card can provide you with a ton of value throughout the game. Alright, so we talked about setting ourselves up, and now let's talk about some dinosaurs that we have in this deck. It's time to go on to tactic number 5, Dynamite Growth. First up, there's Snapping Sailback, which whenever it's dealt damage, we get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. And then there's Siege Horde Ceratops, which whenever it's dealt damage, we get 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Now, Snapping Sailback actually has Flash, so we can actually just flash it in and block to get that plus 1 plus 1 counter, but there are plenty of other ways in this deck that we actually have to ping our own creatures so that they get bigger. But we'll go through those later. Then there's Bellowing Aegisaur, which whenever it's dealt damage, we put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each other creature we control. And then there's Thundering Spineback, which is just going to straight up give all of our other dinosaurs plus 1 plus 1. On top of that, we can pay 5 and a green to create a 3-3 green dinosaur creature token with Trample. Both of these cards are great at pumping up our team and helping us hit for even more damage. And then there's Imperial Aerosaur, which when it comes into play, we get to give another target creature plus 1 plus 1 and flying until the end of the turn. This is a great way to give Gishas some evasion so that it can evade some of our opponent's creatures and hit for even more damage. And finally, there's Majestic Helioptris, which does this even better. It has whenever it attacks, it's going to give another target dinosaur we control flying until the end of the turn. So again, each turn that we have this guy attacking, as well as Gishath, we can give it flying so that it can evade some of our opponent's creatures. And when we hit with Gishath, we're going to get more and more dinosaurs onto the field. Let's go through some of those dinosaurs that can either be a threat by themselves, or help us create threats in tactic number 6, Jurassic Park. First up, there's Crested Hercaller and Registar Alpha, both of which create a 3-3 green dinosaur creature token with Trample when they come into play. On top of that, Registar Alpha is going to give all of our other dinosaur creatures haste. So this deck not only can go big with our giant dinosaurs, but it can also go wide with some of these smaller ones. Next up, we've got Thrasher of Raptors, which as long as we control another dinosaur, it's going to be a 5-3 with Trample. And then Charging Monstrosaur is just going to be a 5-5 Trample with haste for 5. And Charging Tuscadon is going to be a 4-4 Trample, but if it deals combat damage to a player, it deals double that amount of damage instead. All of these cards can be quite good on their own, especially since they have Trample, so we're going to get some extra damage through with them. And if we've got something like Berserker's Onslaught in play, it's going to give all of them double strike and they're going to hit for even more. So for example, if Charging Tuscadon goes unblocked and it has double strike, it deals 16 damage total. Then we've got some other big threats with Colossal Dreadmaw and Ancient Brontodon. Both of these cards might cost a decent amount to get out, but again, with that Gishat trigger, we get them out free. And if they're in our hand, again, we've got plenty of ways to ramp so that we can get these guys out. Next up, we've got some includes that are actually dinosaurs, even though they might not look like it. Torian Mahler has Changeling, which means it counts as every single creature type, including Dinosaur. It can also be one of our biggest threats too, because whenever an opponent casts a spell, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on it. And then there's Ripscale Predator, which says that it's a lizard on the card, but it's actually been errated to be a dinosaur. It's a 6-5 with Menace, so it's a decent body with some evasion attached to it. And finally, this perhaps our biggest threat of the deck was Zatalpa Primal Dawn. Zatalpa is a 4-8 with Flying, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible. So not only can this dinosaur hit hard, but it's also very hard for our opponents to deal with. So we've talked about some of our biggest threats in this deck, but now let's talk about some of our trickier tactics that we can do with our dinosaurs. It's time to go on to tactic number 7, Enraging. First up there's Needletooth Raptor, which whenever it's dealt damage, it can deal 5 damage to target creature and opponent controls. And then there's Burning Sun's Avatar, which when it enters the battlefield, it's going to deal 3 damage to target opponent and 3 damage to up to 1 target creature. Both of these cards are great at helping pick off some of our opponent's creatures with that damage. But with Burning Sun's Avatar's trigger, we can even ping one of our own dinosaurs to get its enrage effect. One of those great targets for this ability is Silverclad Ferocidons. Silverclad Ferocidons is an 8-5 that has enrage. Whenever it's dealt damage, each opponent's going to sacrifice a permanent. This is a huge ability and is very threatening to our opponents. 
And if we can abuse this ability, we're going to really set our opponents back. So we're running things to help us do that with Raging Regisar, Raging Swordtooth, and Forerunner of the Empire. Whenever Raging Regisar attacks, it's going to deal 1 damage to target creature or player. Now we can use this trigger to either take out one of our opponent's tokens if they've got a 1-1 out there, or we can just use it to get that Enrage effect from one of our own creatures. Enraging Sword 2 is going to get us all of our Enraged triggers, because when it enters the battlefield it deals 1 damage to each other creature. And finally there's Forerunner of the Empire, which probably has the best of these effects. First up, when it enters the battlefield we can search our library for a dinosaur card, reveal it, and then shuffle our library and put that card on top of it. So we can even set ourselves up to get that dinosaur into play with Gishas Trigger. And then whenever a dinosaur enters the battlefield under our control, we can have Forerunner of the Empire deal 1 damage to each creature. So this even works from all the dinosaurs that Gishath puts into play. And since this is a May trigger, we can actually decide how many times it's going to happen. This can not only decimate our opponent's creatures, but can also keep our own creatures safe and activate our enrage effects. Overall, Forerunner of the Empire, while it's not a dinosaur, is still a great card for this deck. But now let's go back through some more dinosaurs that are going to help us kill our opponents while helping us stay alive in tactic number 8, Life Cycle. First up we've got Frilled Death Spitter, which is going to deal 2 damage to target opponent whenever it's dealt damage. And then Sun Crown Hunters does the exact same thing but it's going to be 3 damage to target opponent. Both of these cards are great at deterring attacks and pinging our opponents down. Sometimes there's not much that our opponents can do, especially when we can activate these enraged triggers with something like Forerunner of the Empire. So it's important to get our opponent's life totals down, but it's also important for us to stay alive. That's why we're running Verdant Sun's Avatar, which is going to gain us life whenever it or another creature enters the battlefield under our control. The amount of life that we gain is going to be equal to that creature's toughness. And again, we're running a ton of beefy dinosaurs in this deck, so we're going to be gaining a lot of life with this card in play. So we've talked about our own game plan and cards that help us with that, but how do we disrupt our opponent's game plans? Let's go through some cards that do that in tactic number 9, Dino Disruption. First up, there's Thrashing Brontodon, which we can pay 1 to sacrifice it to destroy target artifact or enchantment. Also, it's a 3-4 body for 3, so that's not too bad of a rate just for itself. Next up we've got Territorial Hammer Skull, which whenever it attacks we get to tap target creature and opponent controls. This is a great way for us to tap down one of our opponent's big defenders so that we can get Gishath through with more damage. And then there's Death Gorge Scavenger, which can help us in a variety of ways. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, we can exile target card from a graveyard. If it's a creature card, we gain 2 life, and if it's a non-creature card, it's going to get plus 1 plus 1 until the end of the turn. So not only does this card help us disrupt some graveyard-centered decks, but it also can gain us some life and can even be a slightly bigger threat by getting pumped. Next up is Kinjali Sunwing, which is going to make our opponent's creatures enter the battlefield tapped. This is just another great way of preventing our opponents from blocking Gishath effectively. Then there's Territorial Allosaurus, which is a 5-5 five, five for 4, so that's a pretty good body just by itself. But if we kick it for an extra 2 in the green, when it enters the battlefield, it's going to fight another target creature. But finally we've got Wakening Sun's Avatar, which can be even more destructive to our opponents. When it enters the battlefield, if we cast it from our hand, we get to destroy all non-dinosaur creatures. Unfortunately, if we get this guy into play with Gishas Trigger, we actually don't get the effect since it's not cast, but it's still a 7-7, seven, seven, which is a pretty big body. But if it's in our hand, again with this deck, it's not very hard for us to get up to 8 mana and actually cast it, and this guy can be detrimental to our opponents when we do. Alright, so we've talked about disrupting our opponent's boards, but how do we save our own? Let's go through that in tactic number 10, Safe Haven. First up, we've got Temple Altasaur, which does a great job at protecting our dinosaurs. It says if a source would deal damage to another dinosaur you control, prevent all but one of that damage. So with this, we can feel free to swing away with all of our other dinosaurs, and they will barely take any damage from our opponent's creatures. This is especially good for any of our creatures that have Enraged, since they'll still take that one damage. Then there's Airy Interlude, which is going to let us save our team at instant speed. It's going to let us exile any number of target creatures we control, and then we return them to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So not only can this save our team from any board wraths, but it's also going to get us all of our Enter the Battlefield triggers too. And finally, we're running Rootborn Defenses and Make a Stand, both of which are going to give all of our creatures indestructible until the end of the turn. On top of that, Rootborn Defenses will let us populate, so if we have a dinosaur creature token in play, we get a copy of that one. And then Make a Stand is going to give all of our creatures plus one, plus zero until the end of the turn, so it's going to make them hit even harder. This deck is a ton of fun and can get out of control very quickly. Just one or two hits with Gishath is all it takes to build your dinosaur army. But now that we've talked about the cards that help you win with this deck, let's talk about the cards that help make it happen. It's time to go on to the mana base. We're going to be running 37 lands in this deck, including Jungle Shrine, which enters the battlefield tap to contempt for any of our colors. Then we've got Gruul Guildgate, Kazandu Refuge, and Rugged Highlands, each of which enter the battlefield tap to contempt for either a red or green mana. On top of that, Kazandu Refuge and Rugged Highlands will both gain us life when they come into play. Next up is Slesnian Guildgate, Grey Pelt Refuge, and Blossoming Sands, each of which enter the battlefield tapped and tapped for either a green or white mana. Grey Pelt Refuge and Blossoming Sands will also gain us a life when they come into play. Then we've got Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, both of which we can tap to sacrifice to search our library for a basic land and put into play tapped. Next up we're running three panoramas including Naya, Jund, and Bant. Each can either tap for a colorless or we can pay one to tap and sacrifice them to search our library for a basic land and put into play tapped. Naya can search for any of our basic lands, but both Jund and Bant are limited to just two of them. 
Then there's Warp Landscape and Terminal Moraine, both of which can tap for a colorless mana, or we can pay two to tap and sacrifice them to search our library for a basic land and put into play tapped. Then there's Crows and Verge, which enters the battlefield tapped and can tap for a colorless, or we can pay two to tap and sacrifice it to search our library for a forest and a plains and put them onto the battlefield tapped. And Blighted Woodland can either tap for a colorless, or we can pay three to tap and sacrifice it to search our library for up to two basic lands and put them into play tapped. Finally, we're going to be running 21 basic lands with this deck. 13 of them are going to be a forest, 4 will be a mountain, and 4 are going to be plains. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that deck costs are calculated using TCG Player, Optimization, Optimized with even Heavily Played, and Damage cards because those cards need a home too. The average Gishath EDH rec deck is going to set you back $183.24, so let's see how we compare to that. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at just $24.92. Again, these Commander's Quarters decks are built to be tuned and focused within that $25 budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. Let's go through some reasonable upgrades to see what some of those ways just might be. First up, there's Wayward Swordtooth, which comes in at $5.10. It's a 5-5 dinosaur for 2 and a green. It has Ascend, and you may play an additional land on each of your turns, and it can't attack or block unless you have the City's Blessing. So not only does this card help ramp you, but it can also be a threat, because it's not that hard for us to get the City's Blessing with this deck. Then there's Regal Behemoth, which comes in at $2.49. Just a quick note that Regal Behemoth's creature type was recently errated. Regal Behemoth is a 5-5 dinosaur that costs 4 green green. It has Trample, and when it enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch. And then if you're the monarch, whenever you tap a land for mana, you get to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So not only can this card help provide some card advantage for us, but it can also help ramp us too. Next up is Ripjaw Raptor, which comes in at $2.38. Ripjaw Raptor is a 4-5 dinosaur that costs 2 green green. It has Enrage. Whenever it's dealt damage, draw a card. So not only is this a decent body for 4 mana, but it also can provide a ton of value throughout the game. Then there's Galta Primal Hunger, which comes in at $6.82. Galta is a 12-12 Elder Dinosaur Trample that costs 10 green green, but it costs X less for us to cast where X is the total power of creatures that we control. This card can easily be one of the biggest threats in our deck and it's very easy for us to get it out. Next up is Atali Primal Storm which comes in at $3.58. Atali is a 6-6 Elder Dinosaur that costs 4 red red. It has whenever it attacks, exile the top card of each player's library and then you may cast any number of non-land cards exile this way without paying their mana costs. This card can provide a ton of value for us getting some bombs off of not only our library but off of our opponents as well. And finally there's Vanquisher's Banner which comes in at $5.13. Vanquisher's Banner is an artifact that costs 5. When it enters the battlefield, you get to choose a creature type, and then creatures of the chosen type get plus one plus one, and whenever you cast a creature spell of the chosen type, you draw a card. This is just one of those cards that is very good in a tribal deck. There are a lot of other great tribal cards like Vanquisher's Banner, but unfortunately many of them are very expensive, so they couldn't be included in this list. And with that, our show is coming to a close, but I really just want to hear about what you guys think about this deck, so why don't you let me know in the comments below. When you're buying decks like this one, or just individual cards, make sure you're using that deck list link in the description below. Because not only are you going to get great prices on TCG Player, but you're also going to be supporting this show because they sponsor us. Also, make sure you're following us on social media to get early hints on who the next commander just might be. And on our Instagram, there's even going to be some sneak peeks to our gameplay series Close Quarters, so make sure you're following us there. Our social media links can be found in the description below. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck techs. There's even a general tier where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. If you enjoyed this deck tech, please like it and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, make sure you check out our other episodes on budget deck techs, budget staples, and budget top 5. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.